everyone and welcome back to my channel. Let's not talk about the beanie, I'm having a bad hair day, but it doesn't matter because the theme of this video is what you can do to improve your resume or skills in wildlife biology, ecology, and environmental science during the quarantine. So honestly, it's sad. A lot of people got laid off from their summer field jobs and a lot of you guys were just starting out in the field. So it can be really frustrating to be in the position where you suddenly don't have this field season that you were looking forward to. So in this video, I'm gonna go through some ideas of what you can do here in your house or in your local area to make uh, the most out of quarantine if you want to build your resume. Before I get started, I am really excited to announce that this video is sponsored by Wildlife Collections. Wildlife Collections reached out to me and asked if they could send me some of their jewelry. They are these little sea turtle bracelets and they're super cute. Each one is actually linked to a real life sea turtle. I have Bordy and Mojito and these are actual real sea turtles and the best thing is there is a little QR code and you can scan it with your phone and actually see where that sea turtle is located in the world. So Bordy is off the coast of Florida. You can see all the point locations right there. So Mojito is off the coast of Martinique in the Caribbean. So you can actually zoom in on all these points and obviously Mojito is really like hanging out in the same area. They also donate a portion of their proceeds from the sales of these bracelets to the Sea Turtle Conservancy. So that also helps support these real life turtles and their conservation and research. So thank you Wildlife Collections for sponsoring this video. If you're interested in grabbing some of these turtle bracelets for yourself or for a loved one, click the links in the description box down below to get a hold of your own sea turtle bracelet. So when it comes to you being stuck inside, computers are a magical thing and getting a hold of online courses can be hugely valuable. So that's why this video is brought to you by Skillshare. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, I just always hear that in YouTube videos. No, just like taking free online courses. United for Wildlife is a good one if you're a totally beginner in wildlife conservation. If you want to kind of go with something a little bit more niche, like if you're already a wildlife student, check out some of these skills that are really useful to have as a wildlife biologist, but not everyone does. And that includes like our programming, which if you know what it is, you might be rolling your eyes because it actually can be really difficult. So that's why it's good to just sink some time while we have it to learn our programming a little bit better. It is a programming language that's used for wildlife research and statistical analysis of data. Another one similar to that is ArcGIS. So I know ArcGIS ha was free and it's free until August 2020. So I'm sorry if you're watching that, this video after that, but you can actually get it uh, if you're a student for free. So I'll leave the link to that down below while it's available. So ArcGIS is a mapping program and it is so commonly used. It's even more and more used by the day. So you definitely want to have a basic understanding of ArcGIS and how to use that uh, for your future job and to put on your resume because it really does help you stand out. If it is safe to do so, check out your local nature parks and reserves and try to start learning your species. That you might be like, well, I already like do that. But what about like prairie grasses or what about one of these like niche identification areas that you're kind of lacking in? Butterflies is mine. Like I don't really know my butterflies very well. So take a nature book out, a bird book, a butterfly book, if you can get a hold of one or just use an app like iBird or iNaturalist and go out there and start classifying birds, species, and just get that ID down because you might not learn this stuff in school. So it's really valuable knowledge to have. Another thing you can do right now for the projects that it's safe to do so is citizen science. So you don't have to go outside to do citizen science. There are backyard bird citizen science projects where you just record the birds that are in your feeder or landing in your garden. There's also camera trap websites such as zooniverse.org where you can participate for free. I mean, I guess that goes without saying for free and right away without having to take any sort of qualification tests on camera trap photos and classifying camera trap photos for real life research projects. And you can classify animals, learn your animals, but also participate in things 
relating to the research world as well. And this one might be a little bit harder, but there are remote internships that are still hiring this year. With everyone working from home, a lot of research assistant jobs are starting to go remote. So make sure you're still looking at job boards like Texas A&M Job Board, Ornithology Exchange, Indeed, LinkedIn, all those big job boards. So make sure you're not missing any sort of remote internships that you can do at your own computer without having to go out into the field. Another idea for what to do during the quarantine is science communication. So the lovely thing about science communication is it's almost all online now anyway. I'm talking about social media, I'm talking about blogging, writing, creative pursuits related to science. Instagram could be another way to do that. Twitter, you know, make a Twitter account where every day you post a cool fact about wildlife. Even if you don't want to do science communication for your future career, You'd be amazed how many opportunities and networking happens on Twitter for scientists. That kind of blew my mind when I joined Twitter. I didn't realize there was so many professors and scientists and you know hiring managers on Twitter. So having some sort of social media presence with your name on it or without can be hugely beneficial. And people who do wildlife related art projects, uh, shout out to my friend at Alan Bear Studio uh, for her kind of work on that because I don't always think about like wildlife art as much as I should, but she's doing some great things and she's in a great example of some of the beautiful things you can create within the realm of wildlife art. Sell things, donate some of your profits to wildlife conservation. There's so many opportunities within the field of science communication to help animals and also, you know, get your name out there. And one of my favorites, reading. I've done so much reading during the quarantine. I've read like 10 books in the last few months. There are so many books you can get at the thrift store if they're open or even online related to wildlife and environmental science. If you want to get some ideas for books, I will leave my Goodreads environmental book list down below in the description box. And you can check out some of the books that I recommend if you wanna get your reading on during this quarantine. Another idea is goal planning and career planning. So even if you're in like a good place right now, just looking into the future, knowing like you are going to be going to university soon and maybe now is a time to start looking at college admissions university admissions and what sort of classes you need to take and what sort of grades you need to get and what sort of programs are being offered or if you are already in your career starting to look at you know what you're going to need into the future do you need some sort of certification like a professional biologist designation now is the time to look into those professional development opportunities and try to see and plan at least least what you're going to need in the future. Creating goals and goal setting and manifesting that future that you want, I think is hugely valuable to do when you have the time such as now. Check in with your networking contacts or old professors or old coworkers and just touch base with them and make sure you're still having those connections going because when you get a job, you're gonna need to provide references. So start thinking now about what references that you need and maybe touching base with some people. I hate that corporate buzzword, touching base with some network contacts. That is, that hurts my non-corporate heart. To be fair, that is how a lot of people get ahead is just using those connections that you might have, old classmates, you know, find some alumni pages that you might wanna join, um, reach out to professors who you haven't talked to and update them on how your life is going, create a LinkedIn page and start building up like the projects listed on your LinkedIn page. All of those are gonna really help you become more connected to help you land a job later on. I also wanna say that you also shouldn't feel pressured to do all this stuff during quarantine if you don't want to. So these tips are if you really want to like put some energy into improving your career. I just don't want anyone to feel pressured during like this massive global pandemic into having to be productive or anything like that. Cause I think it's totally fair and valid to not want to do anything right now. So if you are dealing with a f field season summer that is no longer due to the global pandemic, uh, I really empathize with the position that you're in. Like it really sucks to feel like you didn't even get a chance to get off the ground. It's just a matter of time for things to reopen. So try not to get too down because once this passes, there's still gonna be funding for research projects and you're still gonna have an opportunity. It's just slightly delayed. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching this video. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel, hit the subscribe button down below. Thank you for Wildlife Collections for sponsoring this video and I will see you guys next time.